Hi, I'm Scott, and today I'm going to show you how I updated these countertops on Dad It Yourself. Hey, well, good morning, guys. So, brought you guys in a little late on this, but no big deal. What did I do? Well, I'm relaminating these countertops. I removed the old sink, and then I peeled off the old laminate. came off super easy, like... Uh, I would compare it to taking the skin off of a tangerine. It peeled right off. And it was this beautiful, look at that, goldenrod yellow from, who knows, the 80s. Um, had to do a little bit of repair uh, in this corner over here, and then redo the skirting board. There was an inch and a quarter board on here, and uh, the bull nose that goes on the new countertop is an inch and a half. And then I had to kind of rebuild this little divider wall to make sure there was enough space for the stove and for this refrigerator to go all the way in the back. And that's really just two pieces of three-quarter MDF laminated together. Um, the old countertop piece fascia put on the front, built a new top, and then used pocket holes. Look at that. To anchor it into the stud and into the floor. And it's super solid. So I'll do this countertop first. And then we'll dress out that one, and then my customer is going to come back in and do the rest of the painting. All right, so what have I got so far? Well, I've already put down the rubber cement. It's getting tacky here. And then I cut out the piece over here. And I just laid the whole sheet up on the counter, traced it, and then cut out a rough section using my little Ryobi cutting wheel. This is a tile and stone wheel. worked good. Uh, they may have a different wheel, but that's what I had. Um, and I'm using this weld wood that I got from the home center with a foam roller. And as you can see, that's getting tacky too. And once that gets tacky, I'll go ahead and put it on the countertop and we'll move on. Next step. So I got these scraps of wood, just little strips that uh, are sitting on top of this. And the way rubber cement works, if you're not familiar, is when it comes in contact with other rubber cement, it sticks and it sticks permanently. So I'm going to go ahead and lay that other piece over there. It's all cured over this. Then I'm going to get it centered and positioned. And then I'm going to slowly pull the sticks out and press it down until it's sealed against the counter. And then I'm going to go over it with a piece of dowel I have and roll out all the air bubbles and get it nice and smooth. Well, here we go. So that's all down, and while I was waiting for that to cure, I went ahead and did that little piece over there. Uh, hey, watch out for this stuff. It's sharp. I actually sliced my thumb open pretty good on one of those corners. Um, check out. This wall isn't very straight, but we're going to be able to cover that up with the bull nose and then the backsplash. But that's why we have backsplashes, to cover stuff like that. And that looks really good. So... What am I going to do now? Well, I'm going to trim the front edge and I'm going to cut out the sink hole. I already drilled a little hole right there. And we're going to use a little flush trim bit. Let's see if we can focus in on that there. It's extended right now. I'm actually going to lower it way down because I only need, you know, eighth of an inch showing to trim this edge up. So let's go ahead and do that. Router to the right.
This little area here where I can't get to with the router, I'll just go ahead and cut off the excess with the cutting wheel and then finish it off with the file. As you can see, the file does a really nice job of cleaning up that edge. And what's really nice about two things, one using that small bit gets right in that corner and then the file just kind of cleans it up. All right, what's next? So, got some MDF boards and I'm gonna use those as the backsplash. Here's where the existing backsplash was. Normally backsplash is only about three and a half inches tall. I think this one was close to four. And then this is a four and a half inch board. And as you can see, I think that's gonna work out really nice. It's gonna give me a nice clean break on that glue line and a nice place to caulk. So let me go ahead and cut that piece there and that piece over there. And then we'll go ahead and laminate these using the same techniques we did to do the countertop. Okay, so the weather is cold. Uh, I have to keep all the doors open because the glue has all the vapors and stuff and it smells. Uh, so I ran home and changed my shirt. I gotta put some sleeves on because I'm so cold. So I'm getting ready to put the top on this backsplash right here. And as you can see, I got some blue tape on here. And what this is gonna do is protect the front of this um, when I'm using the router to edge it. And it's also gonna keep glue off of it. But we can clean, clean glue no problem with mineral spirits. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the glue on this and let that get tacky. And then that'll be that backsplash we'll be done. Well, that took a lot longer than I thought. Um, countertop literally took me like 20 minutes to put on. I spent close to two hours um, sheathing these pieces of MDF with the laminate. Um, this one, I ended up having to reskin. Uh, I was lucky I was able to get that off again. Um, went a little crazy with the router and gouged the front of it, so it looked kind of crappy, so I redid it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and glue these backsplashes up and do the caulking on them before I put the sink in. It'll be, just be easier with the faucet, won't be in the way. And then I gotta do the bull nose, put a couple of pieces of laminate on the sides here and over here and then on the other side for the fridge. And then I will be done. Okay, keep going. Last part of the countertop portion of the install. Still got the sink, obviously. So I have this bull nose. Check that out. So that will go right along the front and it kind of gets rid of that black line that sits right along here. Uh, it goes on the same way. Got a mitered inside corner over there. I could probably cope it, but I'm not going to. And then a little piece out there and then flat laminate on that side. And then I'll put a bull nose on this side. That's what this piece is, but I got plenty of this. This is eight feet long and this is four feet long and I don't have that much countertop. So here we go. All the bull noses are cut to length and everything looks good. I may actually put a little bit of white putty in this corner just to make that look good. Got these pieces here. I did find out that I can rip these strips on my little table saw because I have the right blade in there and that made that go a lot quicker. I uh, wish I would have known that or figured that out when I was doing these because I would have done that the same way and would have saved myself a lot of heartache, I think. Well, lesson learned for next time. Okay, back to glue. I'm pretty much done now. I'm just going around and cleaning up any spilled glue using some mineral spirits. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put all the appliances back where they belong. So, there we go. easy task. I had a solid six, maybe eight hours in just doing the laminate work here and another six hours getting the cabinets ready for new countertops. There was a lot of work I had to do and some modifications for these appliances to fit in here. 
If you're a DIYer and you have good attitude, you can tackle a project like this. If not, hire a professional. I'm sure it'll be worth the money as well. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, put those down below. Speaking of comments, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you do, hit the bell for notification. I've got some videos over here you may be interested in. Subscribe button's right down here. Thanks for watching. Dad it yourself.